safe run, so you'll probably be seeing this early tomorrow morning. It's actually about 10 o'clock my time right now, but I figured I'd drop a, a quick video about a cell termination and a theory around it so that you guys are prepared Sunday or Monday or whenever I release the next video about how to actually apply and do a cell termination with Apache. Um, I think some of the theory around it is just important to generally know. And um, let's get started with the video. SSL and SSL termination stands for Secure Sockets Layer. And in SSL termination, our main goal is to agree on a key to encrypt and decrypt our messages. So let me write that down as our main goal so that we don't forget. And what does this mean? It's kind of confusing, so let me break it down. So I have a key, okay, in blue here, and my server has the same copy of that key. So the way this key works is like this. Let me draw my key up here. I have this key. And let's say I have a message hello. Okay, I have a message hello. What I'm going to do is encrypt my message with this key. And when I encrypt it, out comes some gibberish. Okay, so out comes some gibberish. And the way to decrypt my gibberish is to use the same key to decrypt it and out comes hello. Okay, so let's see that down here. So I have me, my browser, and I have my server here. That I'm, it's, let's say the server is um, something like a uh, bank. This is a bank. Okay, so it has some super secure information that I want to access. So here I have something like password down here. So I have a message password that I want to send to my server to be able to access my bank account, right? So I have password. What I'm going to do with this password is, is I'm going to encrypt it with my key and produce a message with gibberish in it. Okay, this is my message. Then I'm going to send this message to my server, okay? And what my server is going to do is decrypt this message with the same key and out comes password. So this seems all pretty easy, right? So now the question is, is how did the server actually get a copy of this key? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase my key. So you may say, well, one strategy we can do is send the key as a message to the server. So let me put the key here and we're gonna put a box around it. And so I have my copy of the key. I'm going to send the server a copy of the key so that it has a copy of the key for itself to be able to decrypt my messages, right? However, this proves to be a pretty large problem. Why? Because we have bad guys on the internet. So I have, I have a bad guy here with a bad guy face and it's gonna have a pitchfork. So what the bad guy is going to do is snoop in on this line and uh, what it's going to do is it's snooping on this online and then it has a copy of root key. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a copy of the key down here because it listened in and then it saw this key in the message and it stole the key. So now any future messages that you send to the bank server, I will, uh, the bad guy will be able to listen in and grab, grab all the messages, a copy of the message and decrypt this gibberish and have your password and do bad guy things such as access your bank account and steal all of your money, right? So this is not something that we want. So now our next problem is, is how do we share a copy of this key? So this is, this is now our new problem, okay? This is our new problem. Let me write that down. Um, new or new question rather, new question. How do we 
share the key? And this is a new question we're trying to answer. So previously for that blue key that was called symmetric cryptography because we were using the same key to both encrypt and decrypt our messages. Now we're going to use something called asymmetrical cryptography. And the way asymmetrical cryptography is, is we have two keys. We have one public key, which I'm going to draw in red here. So this is public. And we have a private key. Okay, we have, we have a private key. So the way uh, asymmetrical cryptography works is I have my message, hello. I'm going to encrypt it with my public key to get some gibberish, to get our encrypted message. And in order to decrypt our message, we're going to be using our private key, okay? And so we use our private key to decrypt this message into hello. Our public key is visible to the entire world and our private key is visible only to ourselves, okay? And these two keys are paired together, okay? So now what I'm going to do is uh, draw that here. So I have my public key. I'm just going to have that in red so that it, it doesn't clutter the screen too much. And then I have my, sorry, this is the public key. And now I have my private key down here. And the server has a copy of these two keys. And so I have a message that I want to send uh, to my server, okay? Now what is in this message? What is in this message is my shared key that we had previously. And this is a mechanism we're going to use to send our key securely over to the server, okay? And so what we're going to do is take this public key, right, that's visible to the entire world and encrypt our uh, message. So we're going to, let me draw right here. Oops, this keeps on popping up. So we're going to stuff this key into a message, encrypt it with this public key that is public to the entire world by the server, and encrypt it. Okay, so this is going to say that this, this message is now encrypted. Okay, so now what we're going to do is send this encrypted message to the server. The server is going to decrypt it with our private key. And because it's decrypted, now it has a copy of that same message. And what was inside that message? Inside that message was our shared key. Awesome. So now what we're able to do is, let me have um, our, our, uh, our message again. So we have hello, or sorry, password, so we have password. My server has a copy of the key, of this blue key, of this blue shared key. I have a copy of this blue shared key. I have a message that I want to send to my server, which is password. I encrypt password with my shared key to produce gibberish. I put this into a message. I send it to my server. My server then decrypts it with the shared key, and now it has a copy of password. Okay, so the first step was to send this key over to my server, and then the next step is now it's able to securely decrypt any messages it gets from me. So the reason why this works is, is let's say we have my bad guy again, and Let's say the bad guy was trying to, you know, read this message, right? So read this original message. There's no way for my bad guy to be able to decrypt that message with the public key because you need the private key to be able to decrypt it. 
There's no way for my bad guy to be able to decrypt any messages that are passed after the, the first initial message with the shared key because my bad guy doesn't have a copy of my shared key because there, there was no way to get it, okay? Great. So now something I'm going to introduce is called a uh, certificate authority. And everything still works the same, so I don't want you to freak out and get confused. But let me talk about my secure, uh, certificate authority in purple here. So I have my uh, authority. C A authority. Okay, let me underline that. And what the CA authority does is it certifies that the server is who it says it is. And the cert certificate authority is uh, already pre trusted by the browser. So it's already a established authority that every browser knows. And what happens is, is the browser um, will take it. So when it after it takes a copy of this key in order to decrypt, uh, sorry, to encrypt your shared key, what it will do is talk to our certificate authority and ask, is is this certificate who they say they are? Like, should I trust them, right? Because our server, it could be like fake bank or something, right? Anyone can produce a public and private key pair and, um, and have a secure SSL termination, but not every server is authenticated by the certificate authority. So after the certificate authority answers back yes, everything will then go back to normal. So. Um, my browser, so what the flow again was, my browser asked this uh, bank for the key. It asked my certificate authority, is the certificate who they say they are? It answers yes. And then it goes ahead and sends over the key uh, as an encrypted message and goes through that whole process. If, however, it says no, like in the case of the fake bank and the certificate authority doesn't recognize this uh, public key, then your browser um, will not be able to communicate uh, with this server securely. And your browser will probably pop up some sort of message saying, we do not trust this, um, we do not trust this server. So you'll notice that I probably tossed around the term public key and certificate because uh, the public key in SSL termination is really called the SSL certificate. Certificate. And the private key is still just called the SSL key. So this is just called the SSL key. And that's how SSL termination works. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, aside from technical videos, I also do not technical videos about being a software engineer. You can reach me on Instagram, Twitter, and all that um, through the Amy code. All my social media links will be linked down below. And once again, I'll see you next time. Bye!